know what I'm saying today is kind of hitting your crosshair, because I went through it myself, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, wrestle. They wrestle with it because they don't want to believe the Bible. Please understand that. The Bible says what it says, and we've got to get to the point where we believe what it says. And that's why these rules are so important. And it says, unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. And we've got to be very careful when we go to the Bible. Take all the pretext out. Have these rules. And I made up some bookmarks, and I'm going to bring them to you next week with all the rules on them. All 16 rules. So you can have them in your Bible and kind of refer to them. Um, so in closing, things to think about in context. Who is this passage written to? What is the subject matter? Who is speaking and who is being spoken to? That determines your doctrine. Where does this Bible fit into the structure of the Bible? Dispensations, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then E, are there any key words or phrases? And that's where the rule of individual words are the key to unlocking the Bible. And that's why God says every word of God is pure. And that's why in Revelation he says don't add or take away from these words. And he, he wasn't joking. And today with all, you know, we got a new Bible coming out every year. I just heard about a new one. I guess it's the CEV, the Centennial something version, and then the new, the new translation, sudden NTL or something. And I guess we're not taking that command seriously because that's what they're doing. They're changing words. And as you remember, in closing, what's the first thing Satan attacked with mankind, Adam and Eve? The word of God. Yea, hath God said. Because if you can change the words of God, you can change who God is, you can change the way of salvation, you can change doctrine. Now here's your homework, and this ought to be fun. I took the word Leviathan and Ben, and I got you a bunch of verses here to cross-reference. And next week, using the rule of comparing Scripture with Scripture and context, try to tell me who you think Leviathan and Behemoth is. And I'm going to give you a heads up. It's not a dinosaur, hippopotamus, or a crocodile. So you can rule those out. And by the way, that is traditional opinion, that it is a dinosaur. Um, there's, a, there's, a fan, there's a fantastic resource group that teaches that the Leviathan and being with the dinosaurs, and I, I really enjoy reading their material, but I just happen to disagree with them on that when you compare Scripture with Scripture. And I think when you make the Leviathan and, and the being with the dinosaur, you are really removing what God's trying to teach us through these creatures. And hopefully it'll come to life. And that's just a little bit. We, we can discuss it more next week if you want to. That's just a little bit of it. And if you bought my book by now, um, it's on page 451 and before. It's kind of in that section right there. So, so let's pray, and then we will be listening. Lord, we thank you for your word. We, we thank you that you and your word promised that it would be inspired. You gave it to us for nothing, and you preserved it. You preserve existing words into the English language so that we could be uh, faithful to it and that you could be just one day when you uh, judge the world according to your word. God, I, I hope that this is bringing the Bible alive to people to where they want to look into it. They know that what they get is correct um, and that it can change their life and impact them and be spiritual words for you. In your name I pray. Amen.